Hello. Hey, we're back. Hello. We're back for another one. Always feels like my camera is off. Hmm, try to figure it out here. Oh, we got some doozies this week. We got some doozies. Let's get this going. All right, so we're back with more RVs Gone Wild. I got lots of crazy, stupid, weird, wild RVs here to show. I uh, appreciate everyone sending them in to me. Of course, you can always send me your cool pics and your cool vids or links to other ones. RVing with Joe at gmail.com. I can't reply to every one of them, but I read them all. Let's get to it. I want to thank fellow YouTuber at the Angry Camper for sending me this weird pic he found in the parking lot. I believe it was at a Walmart. And I've been staring at this one, trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. Um, it looks like it's wrapped in canvas. I can't tell if it's... My, my guess is it's a minivan. Um, hey, Angry Camper, maybe you can comp below and give us more information on this. Is this a minivan underneath here? Or what do you guys think? All you detectives out there, you tell me. What is underneath this crazy pseudo RV camper homeless transient thing? I don't know. Tell me what you think. And then we got this one, which, hey, at least he's gone solar. That can't hurt. But again, I think this trailer might be a little heavy for this truck. And at first I was thinking, I hope this guy's in the desert. I see the palm tree in the background. Um, if this thing gets any rain on the front of all that plywood, it's not going to last very long. But then I started looking a little closer and I thought, is that an actual hinged like roof extension on the top that flips over and joins up with the truck or what is going on there? Uh, thanks, John H. for sending this in. I don't exactly know what I'm looking at, but uh, I wish this guy the best of luck. Brian R. sent me this pic. This is an old military comms trailer. He converted it to an RV and a hunting cabin. He's got all the brakes and lights working on this thing. And he's got it connected to a traditional kingpin on the back of this truck, which can more than handle the load. Looks like a good hunting cabin, Brian, and it's like a truly capable load. And good luck on your next hunting expedition. All right, now this camper found this Class A, and I couldn't find any other pictures of it online. So if anybody knows anything about this camper, tell me about it in the comments. This thing is a full Class A with some sort of custom window wrap job. I've never seen anything quite like this on the road. And then behind it is a whole fifth wheel that's attached to the bus. And have you ever seen a fifth wheel attached to a bus? Class A with a fifth wheel hitch on the back pulling a, a, a fifth wheel trailer of some kind back here. Look, this has got to be a hundred foot site. And they're taking up almost the whole thing. He's even hanging off the back a little bit back there. And I don't know, this has got to be like a homemade build or something. They have, they have like four sewer hoses to be able to reach all the way back there. This is crazy. Look at all the storage. Look at storage, storage. Storage, 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 storage. Oh my gosh. Now Bryce R sent me these pictures where he took a retired Greyhound bus, gutted it, and built it up the way he wanted with full solar power and a system for boondocking. I said before, I said in my last video that you know taking these buses apart and putting them together the way you want them is a way to really create a luxury rig. They're built to carry a lot of people, so they're already built to handle anything you want to put in it. Now you might remember this in the last video, I posted this pic of this guy who got pulled over in Alberta, and I was citing some of the violations from the article that this gentleman had got. He got like a 3,800 Canadian dollars. And James E. actually chimed in, sent me an email. Turns out he knows who, who towed this and pointed out to me that one of the craziest parts or one of the parts they really got tripped on was the fact that he chained a car trailer to the back and then attach that to the front trailer mechanism. And he said, but if you look, that's a car hole trailer that's chained to the bottom of the mobile home as a dolly, and that's just not allowed. I guess the way they do this often is they actually attach the wheels directly to the chassis of some of these. I don't really know how it works, but uh, yeah, when he pointed out to me that this was actually a car hauler that just had it sitting on top, yeah, I bet he got pulled over. But needless to say, he pointed out he's done fairly similar things fairly safely. I mean, out there in Alberta, it's pretty flat and straight unless you're hanging out on the far edge of the Rockies. And so he sent this pic that he's done before. Ran a little heavy because they put the axle too far back, but he was able to pull it off. So you know how it is. Getting it going on a flat road, you know, that, that that's one thing. It's when you're coming down the mountain passes and having to hit the brakes, you know, in the middle of a storm. That's when this stuff tends to go awry. But dude, James, thanks for sharing with me. And thanks for giving us more insight on that other story. John H. sent me this picture of his motorhome, which is sort of rebranded and done up as the Millennium Falcon. I think anyone that's had a motorhome feels it's a little bit like the Millennium Falcon, trying to get all those systems to start, how many times hyperdrive just doesn't quite work. But no, this has a real soft spot in my heart. Uh, for those that don't know about my other YouTube channel and my 
my day job history is actually, I, I started at ILM working for Lucasfilm. So I personally have a real close attachment to this one. So kudos to you. I'll probably share this on my Facebook, John, as well. That way all my friends at ILM can see the work you did here. Great work. And if you're interested, that other channel I do is called A Cup of Joe VFX and Animation. It's entirely unrelated to RVing, but if you're a movie geek or you really like uh, computer graphics, you might find it interesting. Hey, big thanks to Tom S. for sending this in and giving me some information I asked about in one of my previous videos. And I was wondering, for those of you that tow boats around, do you just pull them into RV parks? Do you just camp in them? Why not? It has all the infrastructure. And I got some emails and comments from different people. I got this email from Tom, and he wrote, our Sea Dory 25 has everything a traditional RV has. The big bonus is that if a campground's full on a holiday weekend, they just launch out the boat ramp and anchor out. They've been doing this for over eight years and loving it. And of course, he wanted to point out that he tows with a Ford. That's why I'm going to give Tom the RVing with Joe tip of the hat gold star award for giving me this background information and proving me right. I knew people were doing this. And I bet you a lot of those boats I'm seeing out there on the road are really just RVs in disguise. Now, thanks a lot, Tom S. And hey, stay safe sailing and driving out there. Turducken. Now, a lot of you already know what trailer turducken is, but for those who are new to the channel, here's a few seconds explaining it. Turducken is when you take a chicken and you cook it inside a duck, and you cook that duck inside a turkey. It tastes awesome. However, it's not necessarily the best model for towing. Now, here's a first motorcycle turducken. I don't think I've had a motorcycle turducken yet, but I want to thank Bob from Sunray Custom Trikes who sent me these pictures in. He wrote, I converted the bike in 2000 that needed a place for my beagle to ride, but he got tired of being on the trike. So he built this camper from scratch. He made it using a mold, and then he bought this pod trailer in the back, painted it all to match. He actually asked a state trooper once if he could have this, if there's any laws against it. And the state trooper said, ain't no law that said you can't. And he said it looked great. And it really does look great. So if you're around Rockford, Michigan, and you have an interest in trikes, maybe look up Sun Ray Custom Trikes. Thanks, Bob. One of our RV Gone Wild viewers, Jeffrey F., sent me this. He said his friends call him Toto for carrying this kind of turducken around where he always carries his fifth wheel and his boat. It's definitely a healthy, proper setup there with the fifth wheel and the flat toe. But yeah, to those folks who don't know about RVs and don't know about towing, this stuff blows their mind. How can you tow this down the road? Well, good job, Toto. And I think I showed this one before, but now that I know a lot more about dollies and the use of a tow dolly in between a truck and a trailer, I still don't think this is right. But if we're counting turduckins by the total amount of wheels being towed by an engine, we'll then take a look at this setup where we've got at least three different ATVs. You've got a side-by-side -side in the back, two different trailers. I'm not even going to begin to count all the tires there. You can tell me. we definitely got a good off-road turducken going on here. And with that yellow truck, everyone's going to see him coming. I ran across this picture, and although it's not really towing an RV, it's sort of turducken. It's like reverse turducken. It's like putting the turkey inside the chicken here, right? I mean, shouldn't the other truck be towing the other truck? I mean, that thing's... That's a mismatch. That truck should not be towing that trimmer, if you ask me. Now, this one was kind of sad. I almost didn't want to show it. I'm hoping nobody gets hurt. But there was a couple things about this. First and foremost, my heart goes out to anyone who loses their rig like this. I'm guessing this was a rollover and it was on its side. But on another note, and what was quite impressive, is even though this thing was torn apart, the way they got it onto a rig in one piece, uh, it shows that it's quite a well-built RV and quite some talented tow folks. From the looks of it, Jackson Motors there in San Antonio, Texas. These guys know how to put a, a rig back together and get it onto a flatbed like that. And uh, I was even thinking, is it really still hooked up to the fifth wheel? If it's still connected to the fifth wheel and they did that, that's amazing. I'm going to look more online to see if there's any video of this recovery because I want to see how they did this recovery. Again, to the folks that uh, may own this RV or if you know them, my heart goes out to them. Nobody wants to see their rig on their side. Any RV that has a crash is a tragedy in my book, no matter how it happened. I found that looking around for crazy turducken trailers, and you know it's getting harder to find. I think I used up the internet looking for turduckens, but then I decided let's take a look at AI. Let me describe turducken to an AI engine and then see what it tells me is the results. Now, of course, you know, these results are, are created using some of the new AI image generation stuff, and you just get wildly random results, almost like when you dream and just see things that don't quite make sense. Well, it's kind of like these machines are dreaming, and this is what's in their head. So in this turducken, they've got an ATV mounted on top of and back of this truck, as well as got a couple canoes and a bunch of bikes. When it made this one, I thought, how am I going to get that four-wheeler off the roof and back on? But good job, AI. And I couldn't quite tell. Is that an oversized camper shell or an undersized fifth wheel? It's amazing that you can just create these. And if you want to create your own crazy RVs like this, I put a couple instructions at the end, no sponsors or anything, just a few clicks to show you how you can create your own RVs. And then you can send me the crazy ones you come up with in your head. Here we've got a monster truck on the back of what looks like to be a tow truck with a little mini uh, four-wheeler behind it and a boat on top. And 
I think there might be some kind of four-wheeler attached to the hood. Who knows what they were thinking with this one. This one just had a whole bunch of stuff stacked on it, but somebody left the stairs out. This one is like an Escher drawing because I'm trying to figure out, is that ATV next to the trailer that's on top of the trailer? It's whatever. And I don't know if that's a boat or a submarine on the roof. You know, when I was a kid, I used to play with all of my various trucks and cars, and none of them would ever line up on scale. And it seems like a lot of these pictures is very similar. It's like mixing a Hot Wheels with a Matchbox, and it doesn't all seem to work. This one, I tried building a motorhome on top of a motorhome, trying to create some product in that way. It was having a hard time understanding what I was trying to do, though. This was a masterful stacking job. But we've got a truck, and we've got, I guess this would be kind of more like a mini Jeep that you see in the back. And then we've got two boats stacked on top. And somebody else pointed out to me online already, those straps are around those boats, so those boats aren't going anywhere. And if that's not enough, we've got another boat on the trailer there to attach to the end. Because why not? Then I decided to start making some of my own RVs. So we're gonna call this the RVing with Joe Media Wagon here. And then I decided to build the RV that I'm gonna take to Los Angeles. I had AI give me some great ideas for a cockpit setup in my F-150. Of course, I don't need to see the road if I have a front-facing camera, right? And here's another interior. Again, this was real fun, and in just a moment here, I'll have at the very end how you can go and create these images. Just type in a few words. You don't need to know anything about computers to make these images. And it was fun making them. And this is not an AI pick. This is an actual real pick, all right? So this is a road train. Again, this is not RV related, but I've had a few people mention me in the comments, and so I feel like I can't talk about turducken and such without talking about these road trains. In Australia, especially way out there in the remote outback, they're allowed to have these very long road trains. Here's an example. It's not surprising it's an Australian mining company that operates the longest truck in the world. This is the custom-built 3B, affectionately known as the Centipede. It's a 205-ton, 160-foot-long rig. It has an 18-speed gearbox with a 550-horsepower engine and carries over a ton of fuel. It has 110 wheels on 28 axles. To see somebody try to break check one of those road trains. That shit don't fly in Australia. So I said I'd show you how to do this. If you're interested in creating some of those cool AI photos I showed you earlier, just go over to your search engine, type in Bing AI Image Creator. That'll take you over to the Bing page. Again, this isn't sponsored. I'm just showing you how to do it. Create an account there. It's really simple. If, if you don't already have a Microsoft account, you just create an account there. You can use your Gmail address or whatever. And then once you have the account, you can just start typing in crazy words. So look at, take a look at this post-apocalyptic uh, picture that I made. And you saw some of these other ones I made, right? I made them all in this tool. Again, this isn't sponsored. I just thought it'd be cool to show you. You can see for the pictures I generated, here's what I typed into that little search window at the top to make a picture like this. Pickup truck coming a large RV, and behind the RV is a flatbed trailer with some mountain bikes and an ATV on it with a canoe mounted on the roof of the ATV and make the image photorealistic and widescreen. It didn't seem to make it widescreen. I don't know how to do that yet, but it did put most of the things on there and it did four different versions for me. Here's one where I tried again to do widescreen, it didn't work, but I said a line drawing of some trees and some mountains and a road winding into the distance, and the back of the travel trailer is visible on the road as it drives away from the camera. Yeah, it didn't do exactly what I asked, but it did give me a cool picture. And again, you can just start, you know, dreaming out loud. Think of some random picture or some scene, and you know, puppies with, uh, you know, uh, puppies on a beach with, with clouds in the background. Whatever you can think of. You can come up with some crazy ones. What I'm hoping to see from you is some crazy cool RV ideas. If you come up with a cool one, send me the picture to rvingwithjoe at gmail.com. You can also send me any cool picture or video or a link that you've got. I really appreciate your help putting content out there. And if I do use your picture, I'll make sure to thank you. As always, there's some other videos you can check out here. There's one right here to my left. There's one down here diagonally. And there's one right below me. It's just like the Brady Bunch. See you guys later. And like I said, if you want to check out my other channel, which is entirely unrelated to RV, you can check it out. It's called Cup of Joe, VFX and Animation. It's all about computer graphics and movies, and that's basically what my day job involves. See you, everyone. All right, let's call it.